As you can probably imagine, we get a lot of questions and comments on this channel. And inside some of those comments, I see people giving each other advice around hyperbaric or other modalities. And while I encourage communication and I certainly want people to share best practices and whatever their experiences have been, I also wanna make sure that everybody is safe. Now, hyperbaric oxygen is inherently a pretty safe modality. We're talking about mild to moderate amounts of pressure, even in higher pressure hyperbarics, it's not that much physical pressure. And we're talking about oxygen, which is a natural ingredient that your body uses every minute of every day. So when applied properly, hyperbaric oxygen is incredibly safe especially when compared to other medical interventions. That being said, I have seen some advice that makes me nervous when I read it inside the comments. And a few of them have come up a few times. In fact, enough times that I think it's now warranted to actually address them in the video. And so today we're gonna cover three bits of terrible advice that we've now seen regarding hyperbaric oxygen. The first bit of bad advice that I'd like to cover is the more is better mentality. I've covered this a lot in the channel, and I'm not saying that more isn't better sometimes, but very often people think, well, if something is good, some amount of this thing is good, more must be better. But when it comes to hyperbaric, that is certainly not true. In fact, even based on some of the recent research that I've completed, we talked about that certain pressures have very specific effects. And in fact, that lower pressure, mild pressure may be doing certain things that higher pressure is not capable of. And of course, we also know that higher pressure is doing things that mild pressure may not be capable of. So this isn't about how much can I get and how do I get the highest exposures possible? It's about what are my goals and how do I make sure that the pressure that I'm receiving is a good match and will help me reach those goals. In some cases, depending on whatever we're trying to solve, higher pressures could even be more dangerous. At higher pressures, you're more prone to oxygen toxicity. At higher pressures, you're gonna be receiving increased levels of oxidative stress. At higher pressures, you may be bypassing some of the benefits that you could have had at lower pressures, again, depending on what the goal was. One example of that might be when we use hyperbaric for neurological issues. While the brain is highly metabolic and uses an extraordinary amount of oxygen, it's also the most sensitive to overoxidation. And so many times we will begin a therapy at lower pressures, 1.3 and 1.5. And in fact, we may even stay there for the entire protocol. If we don't stay there for the entire protocol, we at least treat at those pressures for a period of time to help those tissues heal because as they're exposed to oxygen and they continue to heal, they'll be more tolerant of higher pressures if we even need to go there. But to just assume that we could take a machine, let's say to three atmospheres, and that's the most we could do, therefore we should all go to the highest level possible for every session that we do is a huge mistake. Additionally, on this more is better topic, is frequency and duration. From a duration standpoint, it's very common to have protocols of five days a week, six days a week, maybe even seven days a week for some period of time, depending on what we're trying to help somebody with. But just like every other therapy that we utilize, we should have some type of press pulse method. We should push the therapy for a period of time and then back off, push it again for a period of time and back off. And one of the things I see is that people tend to get into it and then stay into it without ever really giving it the breaks that they need to allow their body to just catch up, recover, heal, and then get pushed again. So not only is more not better from a pressure standpoint, more is not necessarily better from a duration standpoint in terms of the, the protocol. Breaks are necessary periodically when you're utilizing hyperbaric. And this really leads me to bad advice number two, which is, we'll get right back to that video, but real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics, and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. At thehbotcourse.com, we'll include a link below. We have several courses available from training and certification in hyperbaric medicine, safety director, as well as a few different business implementation options to get the business up and running. So if you think that training and education would be helpful for you, take a look at thehbotcourse.com. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now back to our video. Bad advice number two, you should sleep in your chamber. So again, frequency and duration are critical components to any protocol, but more hours over more days, weeks, months, and years without understanding the implications of those exposures could become hazardous. So in some cases, there could be limits to the amount of time you spend in the chamber, especially if we're talking about higher pressures. So sleeping in your chamber, three, four, five, six, eight hours in a higher pressure chamber is a terrible idea. Please don't do that. 
you would really be pushing the boundaries on central nervous system oxygen toxicity, pulmonary oxygen toxicity. It's just not worth it. And the benefits certainly don't outweigh the consequences or the risks. I believe when most people talk about it, though, they're talking about sleeping in a chamber at lower pressure. So a mild chamber, a 1.3 ATA chamber. And while the risks at that pressure are far less, the risks of central nervous system oxygen toxicity, the risks of pulmonary oxygen toxicity are very, very low, almost negligible. I would also say that there's a point of diminishing return. In other words, you reach a point where the amount of time you're spending in the chamber doesn't match the benefits that you're trying to reap. Additionally, on that same topic, I may instruct somebody, you should do two hours a day, you should do three hours a day. When I make a recommendation like that, the best way to do it would be one hour twice a day, one hour three times a day, 90 minutes twice a day, not two or three hours consecutively, because so much of the benefit of hyperbaric is actually not the time you spend in the chamber. It's when you get out of the chamber and your body starts trying to release this oxygen, which is then metabolized by all the neighboring cells. So much of hyperbaric benefits is going in and out of the chamber or going on and off oxygen, creating this cycle of increased oxygen, decreased oxygen, not just loading with oxygen for hours and hours on end. So again, I don't necessarily think that sleeping in a soft chamber on air is exceptionally dangerous. I really don't think it's worth it. There are far better ways to utilize a tool like that in order to reach most of the goals that you're looking for. And the third bit of bad advice I wanna cover is how to utilize the oxygen and air mixtures if you're pressurizing with air and delivering oxygen separately. One of the comments that I see is just let the oxygen and air gases mix together inside the chamber. You don't need to deliver the oxygen directly to the person's nose or mouth through a cannula or a mask. In my opinion, there's two reasons not to do this. One is a safety and the other is the efficacy. From a safety standpoint, if your chamber is designed to contain 21% oxygen, it's an air pressurized device, then the ambient oxygen level inside that chamber is never supposed to exceed 23.5%. So there's a little wiggle room for increased levels of oxygen, but not a lot. And it's very likely that if you're just mixing air and oxygen together, the ambient level of oxygen inside that chamber is gonna be between 28 and 35%. And as a result, you're significantly exceeding the recommendation of ambient oxygen levels inside that chamber from a safety standpoint. From an efficacy standpoint, if you delivered the oxygen directly to that patient, maybe they're getting 80 or 90 or 95 or 100% oxygen delivered to their face at whatever pressure the chamber is set. Contrast that to mixing those two gases together where instead of 80 or 90 or 95% oxygen, now they're getting 29, 32, 35% oxygen. So if the amount of oxygen being delivered to the patient is one of the more critical components of the reason that they're using hyperbaric and you're choosing to give them 35% instead of 95%, then we're losing a significant percentage of the value of the time they're spending in that chamber. So to me, this is lose-lose. You've made the chamber environment more dangerous and simultaneously you've made the treatment less effective. In all cases, with all healthcare, we should be minimizing risks and maximizing efficacy. And that's the exact opposite. So I would never let those two gases mix. We use oxygen delivery systems, bibs, built-in breathing systems, directly to the patient's nose and mouth. We keep the maximum dose of oxygen going directly to the person in the chamber, and we keep the ambient levels of oxygen as safe as possible. And we cover these concepts, safety concepts, efficacy concepts, protocol concepts, and we really go deep into concepts like mechanisms of action of hyperbaric because we're trying to improve the knowledge base in this industry and drive this industry forward. So if any of that content is interesting to you, you should check out our various training courses that we have available. So all of that content is actually housed on the hbotcourse.com and we'll leave a link in the description below. If you know anybody that would benefit from any of this content, please feel free to share it, subscribe so you can check out our next video, and I'll see you next week.